Hey everybody, this is Captain Kyle. I'm here at Wizard World Philadelphia, again with the wonderful John Glover. And we're gonna talk about his Father of the Year Award. <laughs> Father from Hell Award. You you seem to have a, a tendency to father um, supervillains of the uh, hair challenge type. Diff difficult people, yes. My, my sons turn out to be rather difficult and hard to raise. Yikes. Yeah. And they also have a tendency to... Um, Stop killing me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Interesting, isn't it? So you would recommend not to follow your example as a father? Probably not, yeah. But it's actually up to you to make your own decision how to father your sons. I, I totally agree, yeah. but, but you could learn from an example. <laughs> yeah, what not to do, fathering a son. But let's also talk about you're also the Riddler in a lot of the animated things. They put you between Superman and Batman. Is that to keep an eye on you? I think so, yeah. I'm usually trouble wherever I go. When you got the role of the Riddler, did you know a lot about the Riddler prior to that? No, I knew nothing about it. I knew nothing about Batman, um, and and they and I got an offer. So it I, and it was a, a couple of blocks around the corner from where I lived that they recorded it. So I walked over, had a grand time with a bunch of really talented actors. Um, I did it three times, and never watched it. It was on Saturday mornings. I thought I'm not watching a Saturday morning cartoon. Besides, it wasn't my face or anything. And then, lo and behold, 25 years later, it has become this incredibly legendary series that touched so many people's hearts and souls. It's unbelievable. So I feel quite honored to be a part of something that I never knew I was a part of. And I meant something to people. It just amazes me. And I feel quite humbled by it. So you've touched a lot of young people's lives in these cartoons. When you were growing up, who were your heroes that you really, you know, wanted to emulate? Fred Astaire and Gene Kelly. <laughs> Performers, usually. So I wasn't into uh, superheroes and things. And that's why I'm so surprised. And have such a good time uh, making the movies or the, the films or the whatever, the TV shows. So, I mean, it's always barrels of fun. It's like a second childhood? Yeah, yeah. One I never had. Now, I know you do live theater as well. Were these your inspirations to become an actor? No. What inspired you? I, I don't know. I guess I, I... I remember making, in high school, I'm making people laugh. The first time was I, I changed scenery in a theater in the round that we had to play in the cafeteria. I didn't get cast in it. <clears throat> but I came on in a, a bowler and black, and by the third night, which was the last night, people were laughing harder at me changing the scenery than they were at the play. And it was all subtlety. I mean, I wasn't doing anything outrageous. It was just something happened. So it felt, um, I felt powerful. So the next year I got the lead in the play, the importance of being earnest, and, and I could make people laugh at me. So it just, it, uh, I, I felt at home and relaxed and comfortable. And I didn't think I'd be able to do it for a living, that I'd be a teacher that was like the, the English teacher that directed the drama show or the theaters. But, but I tried it and it seems to be working okay, so. I'd say more than okay and we're glad that you didn't decide to be a teacher, though I'm sure those kids would have been very well taught. But, but I was terrified of being a teacher. Oh. Well, I thought, how could I stand up in front of a classroom and teach them something? <laughs> I wasn't a very good student in school. So we have some fun questions. Okay. What is your favorite ice cream flavor? Vanilla, chocolate, coffee. That's Vanilla three. First order. <laughs> coffee, chocolate, vanilla. But I like the combo. That, that would be a, an interesting combo. I, I think it would be. It is. I recommend it. Now, you've been doing cons. How long have you been doing cons? Is this a relatively new? And in your new experiences, you've been meeting a lot of people. Are there any standout moments with a fan that's been, like, touching or just thrilling? Lots. I, I, 
I, I like to have uh, fun with the people I meet, and they seem to have a sense of humor, so I just have fun and hope I don't go too far. <laughs> that's, that's definitely a good thing. So are you working on anything new that people... Do a new play. Uh, Michael, are you a law, uh, L.A. Law uh, fan? Michael Tucker uh, wrote this play called Fern Hill. Jill Eikenberry, his wife. This is all the butterfly kiss people. She's in it. Uh, and we're going to do it, uh, we did it last year at New Jersey Rep in Long Branch. And we're going to do it in New York, um, uh, September, October, at uh, a theater called 59 East 59th Street, which is at 59 East 59th Street. Um, so come see it. Awesome. So in New York. And. Uh, it's called Fern Hill. Did I say that? Fern, I believe you. Fern Hill. Fern Hill. Fern. F-E-R-N. Hill. It's very noisy in this Coliseum, isn't it? Yeah, it is a little bit noisy. Yeah, yeah. Well, John, thank you so much. My pleasure. And where can people see you at another con? Uh, uh, the Shore Leave in Baltimore. Back to my uh, Towson State Teachers College days. All right, awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much, and thanks, everyone, for watching. As always, have fun and follow your fandom. And be careful. This is Goku. Thanks for watching. And remember, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, yeah!